good morning, good afternoon, good evening. It all depends on where you are uh, watching this video from. All right, um, my name is Monique Collins, and um, I want to welcome you to this uh, channel. All right, on this particular tutorial, we're going to be handling petroleum assay. Yes, but petroleum assay modeling using Aspen Isis. I've been receiving a lot of requests on this particular um, tutorial, so I've decided to um, bring it bring it up on this channel. All right, and I want to apologize for the fact that I've not been consistent with the videos. I've been quite busy for some time, and um, okay, for now I'm less busy, so I'll be bringing up some new videos, and we'll be starting with this. All right, so. On this channel, we've handled oil characterization before, and I remember I told you that before you can model a refinery process of aspen analysis, you need to characterize the crude. And for you to characterize the crude, you need the assay data, all right? And if you have the assay data, you can easily use the oil manager to run the characterization. This particular um, tutorial about oil characterization has been done before, so you can go back to the list of um, my um, video um, list on this channel and um, go through them. You you should be able to get yourself acquainted with how to how to carry that out all right but for this particular tutorial if you don't if you're not uh you don't have the assay data of the crude you want to model but you know the feed stock the crude feed stock all right you can easily model or characterize the assay okay now you only use the oil manager when you have the assay data but if you don't have the assay data, you can easily use the petroleum assay if you know the feedstock. Now there are different feedstocks, crude oil feedstock that we have. We have Yoho, Usan, Brent, Bonga, the list goes on. Okay. So for this particular tutorial, we'll try as much as possible to use a particular feedstock as a case study. So let's use um, Bonga. All right. Bonga is a uh, crude oil feedstock that is found in Nigeria, West Africa. So we're going to use that to see how we can go around this. Okay. Now all I need to do is highlight the crude oil, the petroleum assay. I'll click on Add. Now the, on this dialog box, you're going to see, you'll see this drop down. Click on the drop down. There are different component selection types. So it all depends on what you want to do. So I can as well choose as uh, assay component cell choose to 850 to 1150, 1500 Fahrenheit and all of that. SEC component cell choose, SEC component Fahrenheit. So it all depends on what you want to do. So for this particular um, tutorial, we'll be using the assay component cell to 850 degrees Celsius. So I'll click OK. And um, once I do that, I'm going to see this. So now we have um, the assay name, we have the library name, we have the assay date, region, country. So you can actually use this to select whatever you want. The region, if, if the crude oil fish stock, okay. If you want to set by, by region, if the crude oil fish stock is found in Asia, you can easily type Asia here. So you come to the assay name and scroll to check. All right, if you know the country where the feed stock is found, you can just come here and type the country. For instance, I know that Bonga is found in Nigeria, so I'll just come to this tab and type Nigeria. So once I do that, I can come to the assay uh, name and look for Bonga. I'm interested in Bonga 2014. Okay, this okay, Bonga 2015. Let's use 2015. Okay, so I can select Bonga 2015. All right. Now another way I can do that is I can actually delete this and um, come over to the come over to the assay name and type Bonga 2015. I think this is a shorter cut. All right. So if I do that, I have this too. So I can select uh, whatever type of um, crude assay that I'm interested. In. So I can just take this. So I can take the. I think this is the latest. So I can take this. And then I'll click OK. So once I do that, it will generate um, it will generate uh, some data that I can use to characterize the crude. So this is it. So all I need to do if I want to characterize, I'll just come over to this and see characterize, right? 
a clean characterize you can use either match acid cut properties or match the whole food properties so i can use this so with match acid cut properties it will take from cut one to about cut 20 or 19 depending on the total number of cuts okay and run the characterization based on that okay having done that how many cuts we have let's check we have about 20 cuts all right so now the assay has been characterized so let's check the results so if we click on show results input so this is what our results will look like now you have the whole crude you have the sulfur content to be 24.8 all right so if you look at this you have everything you need you have the um, whole filter block points you have flash points no points cloud point freeze points and whatever properties you are interested in all right and um, down here you see the initial boiling point which is 104 degrees celsius and then the final boiling point is about 1382 degree fahrenheit rather sorry fahrenheit yeah okay so that's that's for that now if we want to check for um the molecular properties i can of this particular code i'll just click for molecular properties and then um, okay you see the property class if you're interested in aromatics and um you see the, um, all right so depending on what you want here and, uh, that's just it okay so that's for that now my interest majorly is on the cut yields what is the fraction of nafta that we can get from this particular crude all right so i can just come to cut yield and click on it so as you can see this is a um, cut yield by weight percent that uh, against the assay so if we look at this properly you see that this is the off gas this over here is uh, the off gas we have the light nafta we have the heavy nafta we have um, the light distillates we have the heavy distillates and uh, we have the percentage as the case maybe we have the ref residue all right so from here you can run your analysis on that all right another thing you can check is the distillation curve okay you can check the distillation curve you're interested in that a cut of temperature against a graph of temperature against both percent so as you can see this is the distillation curve um yeah, it all depends on what you're interested in the properties you can click on this get your um, standard liquid density against um, the temperature in degree Fahrenheit so uh, another thing you can check here you can check your viscosity viscosity cold viscosity PLA and all of that all right all depends on what you're interested in so now you can see both the uh, paraffins and naphthanes and the aromatic the plot that weights against um temperature so you discover that as for the paraffins okay as the temperature increases all right we have lesser paraffin with ink with decreasing in, i'm sorry increasing temperature towards a uh, lower percentage of paraffins while the naphthane we have an increase as the increasing weight as the temperature increases and a sharp decrease with time along increase in temperature path okay so you can use this to run all your analysis on the crude before going straight to the simulation environment to um, start up whatever you want so how do i get this into my simulation environment because for oil characterization once you do that you can install your oil but it's not like that here so if i want to get this in my simulation environment i have to go to the simulation environment all right so um, let's go back to simulation environment i'm sorry this video is taking a little um, longer but it's i think it's 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 good this way so that you can really understand um how to go about this all right so what i need to do now is to go to manipulator get my feeder okay manipulator feeder yeah we we'll go straight to op open up the feeder and um Okay, feed assay. I select this so I can call this longer feed stock. Longer feed stock. All right. So what I need to do now is come to parameters. I already have my initial boiling point to my final boiling point. But if 
you know, giving a different initial to find out what you put. And as well, put it here, all right? You can as well come over to this place and edit that. Now, I can come to worksheet if I have the flow rate of my feed, for instance, if what we have is, uh, let's say, 1,000 barrel per day of this particular feedstock, and then I have a temperature of, say, uh, 100 and, let's say, temperature of 30 degree Celsius, 30 degree Celsius, uh, and the pressure of, say, 40 bar, as the case may be. It all depends on what your process parameters and operating conditions are. Okay, so once I do this, now you see this is my bonga feedstock. So let's look at the composition and see what we have there. So if we come over to this place, you can see that we have um, insignificant hydrogen comp composition, same with nitrogen, CO, oxygen, and uh, we have methane. Yeah, we have methane is zero. Okay, and um, I think we have more of um, the heavier components here as you can see the light components are very minute all right so the, from here you can see the composition where we are cool then you can easily go straight and start modeling your food distribution units now also you can come to attachment if you've gone through stream analysis my video on stream analysis you understand this so when you come to attachment you go to um, create then you see petroleum assay from here you can easily see on, on that result, you should be able to see um, the cut point, the true boiling point. So if you know the boiling point range for NAFTA, both light and heavy, you can easily come here and um, you know get the cut point, take the average, and um, use it to multiply the feedstock. Then you should know the quantity of um, sorry, multiply the, uh, the, the volumetric flow rate of the feedstock. That should help you to find out the quantity of NAFTA, both heavy and light, that you have in your feedstock. So that's how to go about this. Then uh, I think you just have to go through this video, practice, uh, keep practicing, and you get perfect with it with time. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I think um, just let me know in the comment section which other video you like us to work on. Thank you very much, and thanks for subscribing. Thanks for the watch hours. Um, thanks for referring your friends to this channel. All right? Thank you very much.